that just gets yeah. gets everyone excited. We're live. Welcome back to Who Moved My Freedom podcast. I am Hank Strange, and I hope you have your big girl panties on. Tonight, we are talking biometric gun safety with Identilock inventor, Omer. Omer, what's up? How you doing? How's it going, man? Thanks for joining Thanks. us. Thank we're, you for inviting me. Oh, it's, it's cool, man. I always like to have people that invent things and make things on. People who are smarter than I am. And, uh, you know, the Identilock is definitely one of those things that takes some smarts. You know, so, and I figured while I had you here, we would also do a little bit of talking about smart guns. Okay. You know, you know, a little bit. We can talk sure. about that a little bit. So that's going to be the subject tonight. Uh, we're going to we're here really to talk about the Identilock with Omer and, um, you know, and other biometric devices that um, that we can use here in the gun world. Some obviously it's gun guys. We don't like the sound of, and then there are others that, you know, if you're interested in safety, you might consider. So we're gonna have that discussion as well as talk about things going on in the news and all that. I'd like to thank everyone that's joining us in the chat. What's up, people? I'm gonna run through real quick, Omer, if you don't mind, uh, and just shout out everyone that's joining us in the chat. We've got Crispy, he was the first one in here tonight. What's up, Crispy? Also, the Archangel, <clears throat> excuse me, as well as Joe Carpenter. What's going on, um, Joe Carpenter? Tango Hunter. I see Tango Hunter. The Tyvin Show is also in here. What's up, Tyvin Show? Carolina EDC Reviews. What's up, Real Cujo? What's going on, my brother? Rod Mills. What's up, Rod? And uh, let's see who else is in here. Ray Woods. What's going on, Ray Woods? Ken Helmers. I see Gorillas and Guns, DC2, Mega Boost, Dan Davis. <laughs> There's a lot of people in here all of a sudden. Um, I think I said, so there, if I missed you, definitely give me um, a roll call and I will shout out to you. Sergeant Hulk as Big Toe. What's up? Rod Mills says a Guyana <laughs> and a big big. Okay, I don't know if I don't know if Rod's from Guyana. I know I am. So what's up, Rod? And there you go. You know what? Lola's not here. It's just me. Walter's not here. It's just me and Omer running the show today. But you know that we, we can handle that. We can we can do this. I want to invite everyone who's watching right now. Make sure you guys click the thumbs up button. Okay, click that thumbs up. Like this video. Also. Share this video with your friends and family. Share it out on social media. Let other people know that we are here doing the show. We're having a very interesting conversation tonight. I appreciate it. And if you're not already subscribed to Hank Strange, uh, click the subscribe button. Okay, that's how you know when we when we put these shows on live every night. We do this Monday to Friday. Right on top here, I want to thank everyone that. Um, helps us to do the show and sponsors us on Patreon. We are Patreon slash Hank Strange. And um, you know what? I think uh, there's not a terrible lot of stuff going on in news in the news right now. If you guys have some new stuff that you want to talk about, let me know. Rod Mill says he's from Jacksonville, but he's just showing me love. Okay. All the, the Guyanese people in here, which there probably aren't any, you know, <laughs> what's going on. Chris Servin, I see Chris Servin's also in here. All right, so make sure you guys hit the thumbs up, like and share. So Omar, let's get into it, man. Um, Identilock, where where did this come from? Oh my God, so I don't know how far to go back, but um, so I'm an engineer. So when I, gra I graduated from Purdue, I'm a boilermaker. Any boilermakers out there? I don't know any any Purdue. It's Purdue, right? Yes, it's Purdue. Purdue boilermakers. Any boilermakers out there? Shout us out. Let us know. Where is Purdue? I've heard of it, but I, I don't it's know. It's in the beautiful state of Indiana. Indiana. Okay. Oh, yeah, Cornfields and nothing else. <laughs> hey, that's not so, so bad. So I graduated, and my first job out of college was a nuclear power plant. It was really prestigious, but I wanted to do something more cutting edge. So I started working for. Um, Bosch, which is an automotive supplier, and I used to work on airbags. Okay, and cool. If, if you think about airbags, it's a very simple device. It just literally fires off some gunpowder and saves a life. Right. But also, it does that when all other systems in the car have failed. 
So, you know, it was really um, inspirational work for me because in long hours, stressful work, but it was always easy to get up in the morning and go to work because what I was doing was saving lives. So I went on, um, I uh, did that for like a decade. And, um, you know, in the process, I, you know, when my first child was born, I was uh, thinking that, okay, back to the time when I used to play with my dad's service weapon. Mm -hmm. You know, he would lock it up in two different cabinets and I would still find a way to get to it <laughs> and play around with it. Okay. And, you know, even put the ammo together and figure it out because that's what kids do. Kids are curious. So fortunately, nothing happened. But that reminded me when I had a kid, okay, now what am I going to do with my firearms? Right. So, so your dad, went, was that here with your dad? Was he, you know, a police officer or? He was a customs official. Custom. Okay. So... He had a service weapon that he wouldn't use, but it was something that I got to play with, right. unfortunately. So mm -hmm. for me, it was like, okay, I wanted something that would keep me, keep me, like allow me to keep my family safe from the gun I bought to protect them. Mm -hmm. And the big problem was there was nothing that would allow me a quick draw time. And that's what I wanted to create. I wanted to create something that would keep the gun safe and meet the draw time of drawing from a holster. Okay. So... Being an engineer, remember when I before you blink your eye, before I blink my eye, I've already decided what kind of crash it is in airbag world. I can, I've decided if it's a pothole or if it's a crash, what type of crash it. Are you hitting a car or a bump or a wall? I, I've always figured, that, and I've already sent the command before you've started to blink your eye. Right. Okay. So I knew it was possible. Why? Because mm -hmm. I've worked on those little computers that go in the go in your phones, go in the in your cars, like hundreds of them in your car now. So I, I set out with this vision in mind. And what really tipped the balance was when Sandy Hook happened, I was like, I felt like I was painted with a, with a broad brush of, hey, you're responsible because you own a gun. And I know that's not true. So what I was like, okay, I'm just gonna start doing something. And that something has led to this product. I think okay. you've tried yours. And you know, I've met that draw time requirement. Like right. within half a second, you have access to your gun. You can do what you want, but when it's secured in there, it's safe. Nobody can use it. Right, and basically, it locks around the trigger guard, right? Absolutely. So here, I'm going to go for mine right now. There you go. It's released, and so it denies access to the trigger guard here, and the trigger, well, of course, inside of it. Right. Right, so yeah. the idea behind this is that the clamp locks onto the trigger guard area and nobody can get to the trigger. Okay. And now, it takes three people. Mm -hmm. Three people can be programmed in here and uh, it uses USB-C charging, which is the same thing your S8 or Google Pixel uses. Right, and or your GoPro, because I couldn't find, I couldn't find exactly. my... I couldn't find my cable and I use my GoPro cable. <laughs> Absolutely. It's the same one. Yeah, it's plugged up right now charging. That is a good thing because some devices use their own special um, USB whatever thing and I don't, you know, that's no good. A more universal yeah. one's better. Right. Everybody is moving to USB-C. That's why we chose USB. Right. And the coolest thing is you can charge it one time, three to four hours, and just put it away for six months and right. you don't have to worry about charge. It's going to maintain that charge. Six months later, it's going to work. Right. Um, and, you know, if you haven't touched your gun in six months, there's other things you should be doing than worrying about protecting yourself. At least I feel you should be regular with your gun to be able to defend yourself. Right. And Absolutely. Your Absolutely. So we're going to, you know, we're going to go into the details and everything more of the Identilock. I have shown it a little bit. There are some videos out there. Um, we, we're definitely going to talk about more details of it. And, and if, you folks are interested and you have questions specifically about it that um, you know that you want to know. We are going to cover that. I see Ken Helmer says the first time I showed it here on the show, he thought it was pretty cool. Um, and then Gorillas and Guns says that seems better than the smart guns. <laughs> so we're going to talk about um, all of that as well. Tango Hunter wants to know if these are plastic or metal. These are so. plastic. A metal would have been too hard. Metal would have been too heavy. And the second thing, the issue with the metal that I found was if you smash it with a hammer, it'll crack. The plastic, this particular pl polymer, allows it to take the impact better because it bends and then forms back. Okay. 
All right, so it's easier to do that. So let's go back into a little, like, let's, you know, still do a little bit of background on you, like who you are. You know, mm -hmm. now your your name is Omer Kiani. Did I get that yeah. right? Yep, okay. you got that right. Okay, and um, you said that you're not, you're like the inventor of the Identilock, right? You're, yep. you don't like being identified as like CEO or. Right, so, so for me, I'm just trying to solve a problem and that's mm -hmm. all I'm trying to do. Um, okay. Yes, I, 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 I'm trying to run the organization as best as I can. So I could use other titles, but at the end of the day, I'm, I, I invented the product and I probably nobody else has better understanding of the product or passion for the product to move it to market. Right, absolutely. So now speaking about that passion, I think something that people would like to know, not that it's 100% the most important thing, but I think it, it does have some level of importance. You know, are you a gun guy? You know, what's your experience with guns and stuff like that? And how does that um, qualify you or or how does that lead you to be interested in this particular thing? You're a very smart guy. Obviously, you're an engineer. You've got the ability to design things. I'm trying to figure out like why you would go in the direction of doing something like the Identilock. So, uh, my, so I'm not sure about qualification. I don't think anybody, I could have done anything in life to quali qualify to do something like this because uh, it, it has been really hard. Um, but for me, it was basically... You know, I've been on both sides of the gun, unfortunately. So as a teen, I was in a wrong place at the wrong time and I ended up getting shot. Um, nothing happened, meaning I survived and I don't know who he was or what, why I was uh, shot. Later on in life, I, you know, obviously I respect guns and I absolutely utterly believe in gun ownership because of my personal experiences um, and, um, you know, Right now, like I own my my carry gun is uh, the Glock 43, but the backup is uh, HKP 30. Okay. So none of these none of these fit this because there were not enough orders. Um, <laughs> but I obviously yeah, that's have, funny. <laughs> you didn't you didn't make one for your gun, but you're 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 designing these the different models because they're like this particular one that I have here is Glock specific, right? So you didn't. So, you Correct. didn't create one for other guns. You want to see what are the most popular guns before you get into the whole thing of creating molds and everything, right? Well, see, for me, the idea was what orders are coming in. So whatever the orders come in, I took the first five top numbers and it just developed it for that. Um, okay. In that is there's a SIG. I don't know if you can see this. The only thing different is, uh, is basically this portion. The rest of it, you can't really tell the difference. Right. If you look at Glock. Glock and uh, this one is Glock, this one is Sig. There's just slight difference. Yeah. So I think basically for anyone who wants to see here, I'll lock it on my um, thing for a second. I think I have a little bit better lighting. So if you look inside here, you can see that's basically what the setup is. And I do see it looks like there's some, um, are those screws or rivets or something in there? So are those possibly interchangeable or no? So uh, in eventually, the, we're get, trying to get to that point. There is too much accuracy required at this time, but mm -hmm. our goal is to move to that direction, yes. So okay. what, you'd buy, what you'd buy this device one time and then you can interchange later on. And the, also, the goal was when I wanted to make it interchangeable, I wanted to be quick. It's not as quick. It's a tedious process. It's not an hour, but it's not as quick as I wanted it to be. Oh, okay. Okay, so possibly so, in the future you'd have to get a separate unit that you could upgrade, or would this one be upgradable? I have no idea what tomorrow okay. holds. It depends. Okay, I it see. Depends. The, the right. my goal is not. I don't want to be the Apple where I sell you the new thing every day. Right. Uh, I want to sell you one product, good product, and that's all I care. Mm -hmm. um, I have it for. I have five units already, basically. I have it for the Shield. I have it for Smith and Wesson M and P and SD nine. Um, then obviously we mentioned Glock, Sig, um, and uh, 1911. Those are the models that already already okay. work. Right. And so hopefully here, um, if there's folks that have a request for, you know, for some model of gun that you'd like to see, maybe you guys could put that in, and Omer could, you know, factor that in somehow into his brain or calculations on what's popular. Um, I, I was asking you before we started the show about the Polymer 80 pistols. Yes. So this is built off, I think, either the first or second gen Polymer 80. So for anyone who doesn't know, that's just basically the um, the, the frame 
is an 80 percent frame that you finish out and then you build your own glock out of it so it doesn't work on that you know it doesn't like let me see can i get it to lock actually yeah it doesn't really it, it's not able to lock fully around it the trigger guard is a completely different thing as you can see there so um i don't know if anyone out if there's like a lot of desire for that but you know hey i figured i'll show it doesn't work on everything right right and um and then the other thing i wanted to to let folks know is that um we do we do have a link inside of this video part of like talking with omar to come to omar to come on is trying to figure out if we can get a deal going for you guys who are interested in buying this so we did get a link from you right omar yes and that's in the description so if you guys want to buy one you can go in there and i think for a limited time you can actually get free shipping how long is that going to be just so people that's going to be for two weeks and okay. the only way to get that free shipping is to put in hank strange in the code yeah so there you go so you use the code hank strange all lowercase if you're interested in this and you can get free shipping for the next two weeks i figure that will give everyone time to marinate and think about whether you want to do it or not and get out there and buy one after that you can still use the link you just won't get the free shipping right just to be clear the the the, the, the two the shipping is two-day priority so okay. it's not just free shipping it's uh, it's expedited shipping free oh expedited okay that's even better i like that even better so there you go all right so um i think uh, i'm trying to see here what we what um you know, would you like to go over the key features of how the Identilock works right now? Um, as I'm looking at it here, I, you, you can go ahead and talk and I'll just turn it around so folks can see what we're looking at. I'm not sure, do you know what the weight is? It's about eight ounces. Eight ounces. It's really not that bad. It looks like it, it will be heavier. I would say right. most of the weight is probably going into here. What kind of battery do you have in it? It's a lithium ion, same thing your cell phone has or similar to what your cell phone has. Okay, there you go. And so on a full charge, you said that lasts about six months? Minimum six months. Minimum six months. And then you can plug it in by um, USB-C cable right there. I don't know if you guys can see that. And then there's a key. Key is the override. Key decides right. who goes in, who goes out. So so just to, um, let me see where if I can find the key. But basically, um, key decides when you want to enroll somebody in, you got to punch in the key, and then once you open it, you have 10 seconds to press the enroll button. Enroll okay, button. so that would be the plus button? Exactly, okay. so that would be the plus okay. button. And you see the blue light would go on. If you hit the plus button again, it will allow you to cycle through the three different profiles. And you okay. can enroll over somebody or you know basically kick them out or just enroll into an open profile. And uh, all you got to do is put in your finger eight different time it's kind of like the iphone how iphone does it takes eight different angles and the key thing the unique thing about a dental lock is it's 360 degrees doesn't matter which direction you hold it in it will still open i think hank if you show that that might be a better yeah. angle yeah so, so here i'll go ahead and uh, put this in and lock it there so so typically i would do it from here right just basically touch it open it so now what you're saying is if I've got it turned around, I can still put my finger on there and unlock it. Absolutely. Yeah. So and it's the same speed cool. basically. Yeah. And so you can you can program it for up to three people or three different fingers. So if you wanted to, you can program it for your thumb or something like that, right? Correct. Correct. So okay. you, your your spouse and probably one other finger, or there are other ways that you can do with it. Um, the key is a redundant system, so even if the electronics something's up or whatnot they would still work there's nothing no way to disable the like basically the key um what else would i say um i mean yeah it's a pretty simple device the goal was to make something that you can use under stress and, and you know quickly be able to dis access your firearm and that's exactly what we did right so now how did you how did you wind up developing this you know how did you get the idea did anyone help you develop this um, yeah, a lot of people helped me develop it. I can't, you know, one person can't do the whole thing. So initially I had the idea, I um, <clears throat> came up with a mechanical version, then I got a little grant here to create that physical portion of that. 
I mean, that's a, and, and then, you know, I got, I won a grant somewhere else and grants. So basically everything I got, I was putting into it. And then a lot of money was put together. Then I had, once I have a refined prototype, then I went shopping it around and basically asked people to invest in this. Okay. And nobody really wants to invest in a gun business, but there, I found some people who were willing to do it out of how a good idea could make it to market. And that's what we basically took. From that point, I got to a decent manufacturing prototype, and then I was able to, living in Detroit, that's the best part, right? There's manufacture everywhere. And I was able to leverage a few of them to help me, you know, jump in and, and help me solve the critical problems that required to make it a robust product. Right, and so one of the good things with Detroit, I know Detroit is under a lot of pressure lately as the car industry kind of like fizzles out there, but they are looking to to help develop other industries coming out of there, right? Absolutely, absolutely. We got right. biomedical, biotech, whatnot. We got some software going on. Uh, we have a lot of automated driving going mm -hmm. on here as well. Okay. So, so how how's, how are guns viewed in Detroit? Oh, that's the best part, right? Because we have a high gun ownership. We have a huge hunting um, a tradition here in, in Michigan. So, you know, I, I, I don't know what the stats are on the gun ownership, but I think it's at least one in three people is a gun owner. And okay. on hunting day alone, they say that, you know, there's more guns out in Michigan than owned by a U.S. military. I don't know if it's true, but at least we claim that. Yeah, possibly. It's possibly true. <laughs> and I know in here in Florida, there's a lot of people that come from Michigan, specifically from the auto industry, that have either, re either retired here or they're like snowbirds here to Florida and they're all gun gun folk as well. So there is like a, a positive gun culture in Detroit. So that's only one side of it, right? Mm -hmm. But then also on the other side, we've got the engineers to engineer this thing, designers to design it, manufacturers to manufacture it. So when you put like gun owners, and along with all of these, for me, I felt I had the perfect ingredients because when I explained it to people, they just get it. They understand the need, they understand the cause. It wasn't like, you know, maybe some of those blue states where they wouldn't understand what, what why would I want to develop something like that? Right. Absolutely. So, um, you know, I think that we did cover like what different guns they're available for, but I think there's some people out there would like to know if in the future, you know, what, yep. like what are future appliances of this technology that Identilock is looking to do? So for example, can we get one for an AR-15? Yes, but you know, not today, but yes, this is, it's on our roadmap. Absolutely. Okay. Same thing for the Mossberg 500 and 870, Remington 870. So those are all on our roadmap. It's just the only way to get there is through sales for us. There, there's no there's no other route for us. Okay, I see. So right now, how long has it actually been on the market then? Uh, August. Since August. August is, okay. So end of August is when it was stocked on Cabela's floor. Okay, so you can go into Cabela's and buy these. Absolutely. Okay, so other than Cabela's, people would have to buy it directly, of course. Absolutely. So the only other place on Cabela's is getidentilog.com. Okay. But more importantly, you know, the, the link in your description is where you, you should use to get to um, getidentilog.com. Okay, I see. All right, so um, let me see now. I'm going to try to look through here and make sure I'm getting some questions from people out there. Uh, now, who do you think... You know, let, let's um, let's think about that a little bit here. Like, who do you think this is made for? What you know? How can people use these? So you know, there's a lot of products out there. This I don't I don't claim this to be a theft prevention device. It's a deterrence. It's a deterrence. I designed it to be a deterrence for young kids. That was my key focus. But if but, you know, the only other p uh, portion that it adds to is you know when a young teen is going through a difficult time and he's gonna make um, a decision that has no return possibility, I think this would also be able to deter that situation. Um, you, know, there's, you know, if somebody wants to do something, you can't really stop them, but those are the only two things, accidental discharges and I hope also in te teen suicide. Those are the only thing that this device is um, to build the function in. Yeah, right. you can use it, uh, you know, a, a, a woman can carry it in her purse, 
you can keep in your truck. There's there's a lot of different applications, but the sole purpose was to solve the problem that I had, that I wanted to be able to access my gun and keep my kids from getting to it also. Right, so you never intended it to take the place of a safe. Correct, so now just be, now I'm gonna make sure I clarify this. I'm not saying that, you know, if you give enough time with anything, doesn't matter what, a safe or a dental log or whatever else, eventually they'll get it. Absolutely, yeah, I think and so. And that's my only point. If someone that's really wants, point. Yeah, if someone really wants to get into something, they'll do that. I mean, I think one of the applications for this would be, you know, there's there's gun guys um, like myself, you know, we like to leave guns around the house. I like to actually have a gun on my person, and the best thing I think for that would be in a holster, right? Right. And, and that's fine if it's on me, but if it's not on me, you either don't, you know, depending on the age of the kids or the other people in your house, you don't necessarily want other people to have access to it in your house, but you might want to be able to leave things around where you can quickly access them versus like having it in a big safe and maybe it's in a back room. And so you have to get all the way to that back room, get in that safe and then get that thing. You can leave it around and, and it keeps it from someone going there and actually getting inside the trigger guard, being able to pull the trigger. Now, one of the things I did notice is that when it's in there, um, you can still eject the magazine. Now, do you think, so if you look at that, you know, I could take, it's in there, it's locked in, right? Now, I could still eject the magazine. Is that a good thing, bad thing? What do you think about that? Are you asking me? Yeah, I'm sure, uh, well, you know, I'm so, asking folks out there what they think and, you know, and what, what do you think about it? Or what's the feedback you've been getting from people? So my goal was to give you as much flexibility as I can. There are some firearms that I can't do that when, for example, for 1911, you cannot, you're not able to release the magazine in most cases, but I wanted to give the owner the most flexibility. That, that was my focus. Okay, all right, so you wanted the owner, because I mean, essentially, you know, that really depends. If you've got one in the chamber, it still can do something for you if there's no magazine in it. But if you don't have one in the chamber, then think about it. You're going to have to unlock this thing, then chamber the gun, you know. Um, th this magazine's empty just for anyone who wants to know. So you'd have to chamber this gun and then do something. So I would leave one in there. But I'm sure there's people like, well, what if someone just comes along and drops your magazine out of there? You know, so is there a way if, um, you know, or is that maybe it's something you guys can do in the future where if someone with a Glock, let's say, wanted to have that magazine uh, release covered up, is that possible? Um, actually, we actually did a lot of work to remove it, to make oh, it, okay. to uncover it. So yeah, covering it would be right. okay. And that yeah. is the kind of feedback that I'd be looking to hear from you Yeah, guys. I mean, I don't know. It, it doesn't really, I, for me personally, the big thing that I would want to do is just keep someone else from being able to use the gun. Other right. than, you know, I mean, they could throw it at me if they want to. But, you know, uh, I would I would just want to keep someone from using it. So I don't know what the folks out there, what they feel about that. Um, you know, let, let us know whether you guys like the magazine, uh, people having access to the magazine release. Yes or no. What you guys think about it. I think that'll be a good, you know, a good point that we can get to here. While we have Omar, we can ask him all these questions. I want to encourage everyone that's watching please click the thumbs up button, share this video on your social media. We definitely need to get the word out there and let people know that we're um, having this conversation. Any other feedback that you guys have gotten so far about this? So are you asking me? Yeah. Right? So, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, there, there's a lot of feedback, a lot of things that we're learning right now. Mm -hmm. uh, once, you know, um, for example, one feedback is that, when you have the proper grip, it's not easy to hit the fingerprint button. Valid point, the point of that design was to allow you to uh, gain access to the gun before before you get into that position. Right, so, so I think what, what you're talking about is if you've got the proper grip on the gun, then your finger has to come down here in order to unlock it, right? Correct, and the purpose okay. of that is if I we had it right high above, my concern was the if, if you're under under stress, you might press it, not realize that it's slowly released, and end up probably, uh, do, you know, discharging the weapon prematurely. Okay. 
Yeah, and I guess if you wanted to, you can always program it for like a two-handed operation where, you know, you program this finger. This one's not programmed for this finger, but well, you can program it where this finger can unlock it and then you still got your hand here ready to go once you come out, right? Absolutely, but that's a very, I'm glad you bring that up because this is how a left-handed person would use it. My thumb would be mm -hmm. programmed in and now this comes off. So this is how a left-handed person uses the identity lock. Right, okay. So, and then I think um, one of the other things that I could think about off the top of my head is when, uh, or another thing that might get in the way is, for example, with this is a Glock 17. If you've got, uh, I think this is a Glock 17. Yes, it is. <laughs> Just making sure. Gen 4. So if you have a light or something here, you're, it, you're really not going to be able to lock it on, on there. Um, is that something that you guys looked into? Because I think a lot of people who, for example, want to leave this, you know, on the side of their bed, on the nightstand, you know, or even in the home for, for um, you know, home protection would probably want to put at least a light on there. What do you think about that? So there are a lot of, got a lot of lights out there. Some work, some don't. It's hard for us to say which one work and which ones don't right now. Uh, but, you know, it's a safe assumption that you should check because it's not designed to. creature in the, uh, on mm -hmm. the drive. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. That's Walter is coming in. Um, I, but I think his son Spencer had something to say to him. There's some kind of creature in Walter's house, people. I have no idea. <laughs> the, the beauty of live TV or live internet or whatever you want to call this. Right, Omer? Yes, sir. So, so you were saying that the thing is with the light is that some will work, some won't. And, um, you know, that's just one of those things that people have to check into. Is there is that something you can do about do something about that going forward? Like having the ability, if you've got a big honking light on there, that you could still lock it in. Correct. That's the, so. I think typically it's the smaller guns like shield that it's impossible for us to be able to work on it based on the current design. But in the future, yes, that's the goal to be able to fit in accessories along with it. Oh, okay. And then what about um, the placement of the, like the, you know, where you've got the fingerprint scanner, is that something that we can flip it maybe, have it on the other side for people who are left-handed? Uh, right now there's no plans for that because the feedback that I've gotten from left-handed people is this is fast enough because it's two-hand operation in both cases because you, you don't want to drop it every time. Okay. So... But yeah, I mean, tell me, what would you like? Okay. I mean, in, in the future, right. yes, absolutely, we have other, we can do, I mean, you know, moving the sensor is not a huge task. Right, okay, and I just got a question from the Tyvin show. Walter, first of all, let's see what's up with Walter. Walter, you good? Can't hear you, I think you're muted. Well, there you We're go. Racing around, trying to get ready to go. So I figured I'd pop in and say hello, but I'm probably gonna have to cut it short, so. Okay, no no worries. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Um, Goodbye. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. I was Gee, at the thanks, shop. Walter. Yeah. I w oh, I figured you were at the shop getting work done, getting ready to go out to Knob Creek. Let yeah. me introduce you real quickly to Omer. Omer, Walter. Omer, how you doing? Good to have yeah. you. Yeah, I believe it's Omer with the O. So like Homer with the H, but you just drop the H. So Omer. Omer. Right? Yes, sir. That's there true. you go. And Omer is the inventor of the Identilock. Walter, okay. I don't know if you missed that. Is that, a, is that a, like a thumb, like uh, fingerprint so, type thing? Yeah, basically, yeah. here's the Identilock. It goes over the um, trigger guard of a Glock, and it comes for a few other. They've got models for a few other guns. Right. And you can program your fingerprint in there, and it oh. quickly you know, releases. Right, 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 it gives right. you full access to the gun. We well, uh, if it's if it's if it's as picky as my cell phone is, it's pretty uh, it's it'd be pretty uh, secure. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? When you gotta touch your cell phone to get it going, and you're like, oh, come on, come on, come on, we're finally going. Yeah. Then, you know. Right. It's it's definitely better than that for okay. sure. And, yeah. and I'm not the only one saying that. Other people who have reviewed it are also saying that. Now, with the uh, I think one of the things that's going on with the uh, new iPhone um, X coming out or 10. I prefer to say iPhone X, thank you very much for anyone who wants to correct me. But that has a face scanner, and that brought up the debate of oh. is fingerprint scanning faster than face scanning? And I think fingerprint scanning is faster, right? Well, it really depends what kind of engine you put in, right? 
it's, okay. it's really the process. So if you have a Mac, you know, if you put a supercomputer in there, yeah, it doesn't matter. Right. Yeah. Okay. And it has it, with your facial recognition, it has more things to recognize. I would think. I mean, I don't know versus a fingerprint. I, well, I the think fingerprint, the way it's working is it's taking the picture of your of your finger and looking for grooves, right, right, which right. basically does look for mountains and valleys and looking for patterns of that. Right, right. And the same thing here, what it does, it takes yeah, it, true. and takes, it's taking it, it's, it's in essence the same thing. It's a, dimension, yeah. a dimensional thing. Yeah. yeah. True. Yeah, but for some reason, I think lots of people, I, I know I've seen this whole debate about that in regards to the iPhone X because people say, first of all, you know, there's that whole thing like the Dementor from Harry Potter, you know, it looks like it's ripping your soul out, but which, you know, which it's not really doing. But I think a lot of people prefer the fingerprint um, scan just because it's uh, faster. And I think there's probably things built into the face thing to stop people from spoofing a face. Is it more is it more difficult to spoof fingerprints or a face? You know, obviously this is your area of expertise. What can you tell us about that? What do you know about this? I can tell you about it's how difficult it is to spoof your finger on Identilock because you know you can't really take you know the way to do it on a tape and then put it on a cat and whatnot. That that's not gonna work because yeah. it's looking for capacitance, the thing is looking for the oil in your fingers, then it's looking for the grooves. So there's okay. quite a few different things that it's looking for, uh, but you know, with enough time, anything is hackable. Yeah. So it's not like in the movies where you see the dudes use some uh, some kind of tape, like I don't know. Usually it's not duct tape. It's what from where I don't know what you guys call that tape here in America. I always call it sellotape. Cellophane. No, the clear tape. Yeah, cellophane. Is it cellophane? Yeah, that's or that scotch tape. Scotch, scotch tape, tape. There you go. Scotch, scotch tape. tape. Yeah. The brand so, name. Yeah. yeah. So you always see, like, you see in the movies, they just take some scotch tape and then they blow and they do some, put some dust on someone's fingerprint from a glass or something where they were drinking wine. You know, is that possible, Omer? Or is that just For a movie? No, in the movies, everything is possible. Remember, they oh, shoot like this on the side. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, so that's like what my people call picture like a picture. So that's that's not real. You can't spoof this technology like that, right? No, I mean, like, listen, anything is hackable, but no, it's going to cost you more than a gun to spoof this technology. Okay. Everything is doable. Yeah. So it's not, so obviously, like for the intended purpose here, it's not someone who just broke into your home or a kid who has access to it is really going to be able to figure out very quickly. Exactly. And be that's able the to key do. Point. That's okay. the good point. And then you had mentioned something about the chip that's in there. So what's different than the chip that's in this versus stuff like uh, iPhones, for example? There's not much different. I mean, okay. if you compare it to the Android, it's practically the same thing. And okay. that's why that's why the speed, right? It's so fast. It's because mm -hmm. what I put in here is basically a cell phone powerhouse. Oh, okay. Okay. And so does this connect with an app? To Android or iPhone at all? Absolutely not. It does not connect no, to anything. Not. The only thing it connects to is power, okay. and you know, and you can't really do anything on that. And one, I want to at this point, I want to specify something else. I do not store fingerprint in here. Okay. I, it takes the fingerprint image, converts it into a long binary number, and I store that in a secure part of the memory. So even if there's somebody were to rip it open and figure out how to get the right part of the microprocessor, which is impossible, they can still have no. They still do not have your fingerprint. Okay. So for example, those those of us who are very very paranoid <laughs> and don't want the government, let's say, <laughs> you know, CIA or whoever. Well, you you mentioned you mentioned the app. That would be the easiest way to get into it if it had an app that went to your phone. Yeah. Right. That, as, as we all know, none of that stuff is really secure. Um, the Absolutely. cloud, you know, yeah, anything, yeah. anything that goes through the air or into another device, you know. Um, yeah. Hank, do you have your key that you could show? Uh, no, I don't have my key. I, I don't um, know if you guys can see this. Yeah, this, this uh, I'll, I'll lock it. I'll lock it on you. We can see it. We can see so, the key. Go ahead, show that. So this is this is not a key that no. is again anything is hackable, but it's not. This is not going to be a piece of cake. It's going to yeah, take some time. Like a, what kind of key is that? It's a dimple that, switch key. Oh, okay. Okay. It's, oh. it's is yeah. it is it electronic or is it just 
dimples themselves or how does it? It's just dimples, both yeah. sides. Yeah, I've got a lock that came from Switzerland and it has exactly. some funny, funny thing on it like that. And it's like nothing yeah. you see here. So yeah. absolutely. Back in the day, my dad's got a uh, Volkswagen has used to have the similar key. Oh, cool. So yeah, I, I was trying to bring my uh, my key in, Omer. And remember I told you before I lost the USB cable? It's all, right. the key, the USB cable is all in the box. And I'm not trying to put any blame on Lola Strange, but Lola <laughs> Strange does not like boxes laying around. Well, you have a, I won't say anything. I won't yeah, say anything. I have a lot of boxes <laughs> laying around. That's just the, that's the, that's the nature of what I do. Yeah, a lot of, everything comes in a box. You know? Yeah, things come in boxes. I'm always trying to leave everything in the box so that I have, like, this is how I know where the things are supposed to be. Lola comes along and Ooh. sees that box and it annoys her Ooh. and is the bane of her existence. And then she magically disappears with that box. Yeah, you know, and then I have no clue where that is. So there you go. That's what happens. But that is cool to know with the key. Now, um, there was a question I think that came from the Tyvin show. He said that is it possible to to put a magnet in here somewhere so that you can like you know maybe magnetize this under a table or something like that. No, not on the device. On the okay. devices, there's nothing that you know. I want to prevent somebody from taking a magnet and trying to hack this thing like they did with the other smart guns. So I have deliberately done everything possible to make it impossible to hack with a magnet. Okay. Yeah, Ele electrical electronics and magnets don't usually mat mix very well. It's you know. Yeah. Okay. Lola's apparently not happy. Lola's in the chat. She's not happy. Oh, she's busting your butt. Yeah, that I, I was complaining about her. So if so, so what if someone decided to like? You know, they bought this and they wanted to glue their own magnets on stuff. Would you not recommend that? Would that mess up the chip or other things going on in here? I think what I've seen a lot of people do successfully Velcro. is use Velcro. Velcro. Yeah. Velcro. Okay. Or or Velcro. or look and hoop and look. I um, mean, hook and loop, so that so the so the copyright guys don't come after you. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you're not allowed to say Velcro. Oh, I sell patches, you know. And if you put pat, if you put Velcro on, say eBay, I got a nasty note from eBay. So, oh, yeah. you can't say Velcro. Hook and loop. It's hook and loop. Yep. Wow. Okay. I did not know that. Whatevs. <laughs> we Unless say you... Velcro. We say Velcro around here, and we say Merry Christmas. Proudly, proudly, right? Yeah. We say Merry Christmas, and we say. Oh yeah, Merry Velcro. Christmas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wherever you know, and if you don't celebrate Christmas, have. Have a nice holiday, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, you know what I'm saying. But we're still going to say Merry Christmas. Okay, right. so um, you know what? Uh, did you have any other questions, Walter? I know there's a bunch of questions coming in there, but I wanted to ask. Did I miss some anything other stuff. about? At this point, you guys are just doing um the Glock and handgun type things, right? Nothing like for AKs or ARs or anything like that. Not yet. Not uh, yet. That's on the roadmap. The key thing is the only way to get there is through sales for us. Right, right, right. Okay. Yeah. I think that would be a good application. Um, you know, AR is pretty much, well, you know what? There are some ARs that have different kinds of uh, trigger guards, right? But for, yeah. Yeah, for the most part, it's kind of uni uh, a universal thing. Yeah. yeah, they're usually similar unless you get some really complex uh, trigger guards, which some people do have out there. And then AKs is pretty much the same thing as well, right, Walter? Yeah. Yeah, pretty yeah. straight up. Yeah. yeah, and then I think Omer mentioned that they are also thinking about um, shotgun, like Mossberg, right. uh, Remington type things. So yeah. that would be a good application. But you know, they've got to sell these first, Walter. That's what the thing is. You got to sell it. These have to get out. They actually, have, there's this thing called like make some money out of it first. Oh, I, I trust me. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get, I get, you know, it's like, let's make this, let's make that. It's like, I'm going to sell more than five or six of them. You know, it's like, uh, yeah, you have to think about that. So Walter, how would you use something like this? Um, you know, I've got my ideas, but I'm going to ask you first, like well, what applications would you put this to? That's a bedside thing, you know? Okay. You know, when you're, it's dark, you don't want to flip all the lights on in the house to, to figure out, to do the combination on the, on the thing. So you can just touch it and go. Yeah. I mean, you know. or yeah. in your car, you know, in the, in the, you know, I mean, uh, yeah. Yeah. I think in the car is a good thing as well. I know here in Florida, you can have it. Um, you know, the, I think the rule in Florida says you have to have it in a locked container, which could be uh, anything. I think that's uh that's a, there's a lot of, uh, false information on that actually. Um, 
That's the rule in, in Florida. You could, it has to be in a in a closed container. In your car when you're driving? Yeah. What good is it then? I know. No, you can have it on you. Obviously, you can have it on you. You can open carry in Florida. I'm saying if you don't have your CCW or something oh, like that, okay. so you can have it in your glove box. It's some type actually, of. I've always understood it's in some type of container that. that yeah, makes it doesn't you have, have to necessarily be locked. Locked, but right, right. yeah, it could be it has zippered to be up. Closed. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. That's so how you have to. You have to open it before you get to it. Yeah, That's therefore, right. this would qualify. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily leave it out in the open. No, I wouldn't either, yeah. That's <laughs> probably not a good idea. Easy way for you to get it stolen or scare the you know, crap yeah. out of a police officer or something. <laughs> yeah. If it's, let's say, on your seat. But you can tuck this under a car seat. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or your center console. Yep. Yeah, center console. Or like we were talking about, if you use the Velcro. Well, Velcro. Then, if you use like Velcro uh, patch, like a Velcro thing, and you right. can put it on the side or something like that, I think that's good. Right. Also, if you're traveling, I think this is a good thing. You can have it in the hotel. I don't like those hotel safes. Yeah. And the reason why I don't like those hotel safes, first of all, they're not really safe, and um, the the maids and stuff like that have codes to get into those. Also, if you if you're let's say you're going to sleep in the hotel, right? And you know, to be honest with you. As you know, you've traveled with me, Walter. I yeah. go to sleep with my gun on me. I I never slept with you, so I couldn't tell you that. Yeah, well, you <laughs> haven't slept in the same bed, but we've traveled together. Right, right. You're yeah, always yeah, you're yeah. always you're always carrying. Yeah. Where, yeah, thankfully, where, thankfully things haven't gotten that desperate yet. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I like to have it on me. But if you don't want to do that, let's say you do want to put it on the side of the bed in the hotel. You don't want to put it in the safe because if someone no. kicks in that door, you got a long way to go. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to try to remember how to open the thing, you know. It's like, yeah. <laughs> Good luck with that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think this is um, this is a fast way. You know what I was thinking? What like talking about that? I know that at night, if you have this on the on the side of the bed and it's all dark, you won't actually see it. What I think would be cool, maybe somewhere in the future, if there was something that if there was all of a sudden a lot of noise, this just does like a little light flashes. <laughs> You know, if it detects so, a little bit of noise. What do you think about that, Omar? So this is designed to be a stealth device. The idea okay. is that let, you're the only one who knows it. The, okay. the feature for the night is close your eyes and, and try to go around that groove. It, the groove directly forces your finger in onto the center. Okay. So I see what you're saying. Train yourself to know where it is. And so hopefully in the middle of your dream, <laughs> no. when you wake up. No. No, yeah. close your eyes, even for the people who don't know where it is, the groove right. is designed. Oh, I see what you're saying. Right, right. Yeah, so if you pass your hand over it, you feel it'll that. Fu it'll funnel your right. finger into the... Yeah, okay, that's spot. true. Yeah, I feel that. Okay, good. All right, so you know what? We're going to definitely come back. I'm going to scan through the uh, comments and stuff like that and get a bunch of uh, comments that folks have out there. One of the things I wanted to talk to you about, Omer, since you're here, is like other biometric... Uh, gun safety things and especially you know the, the like uh, people are gonna scream when I say this word but smart guns <laughs> so I'd like to know what you think I'm just about gonna laugh I'm not gonna stop yeah you're gonna this. laugh I'm yeah gonna so laugh. what do you yeah. think what do you think about smart guns we'll put the smart guns right next to the smart cars <laughs> yeah you know this is something that gun guys don't like <laughs> and you're and, and Omer's a gun guy by the way Walter you know uh, are you a member of the NRA I am uh, yeah, yeah, he's a M he's an NRA guy. He carries a Glock 43 and what a CZ. No, an HKP 30. Oh, HK. Okay, we'll forgive you for that. You carry an HK. <laughs> okay, Sig 229. <laughs> <laughs> I have that too, and then I have uh, the Glock Glock 17. I have no, we're like shoot. reverse snobs of HKs. You know, we have a friend <laughs> of ours who's a HK. He's an so, HK snob. He wears the hats, everything. So here's the reason. I my first job really out of college was working in Stuttgart on airbags. Oh, so wow. cool. being German, being in Germany, driving the Autobahn and everything I got and being trained as an engineer in Germany. You know, even though I went to Purdue, I was really my first job two years, you know, oh, that had to be some that had to be culture shock. No, it was actually very enjoyable for me. They they really beat engineering into you and that yeah. happened in Germany. <laughs> so I have the appreciation of German engineering, yeah. and that's why the HK. Oh, yeah, so that's, yeah. Can you imagine and that? Actually, German engineering, that's like, they I, take then, that seriously. 
they do because remember I had uh, not long ago I had two HKP30s two. at the same time. I have never bought any of the two things at the same time ever. What, ever. What did you have two HKs for? Were you dual wielding? For both sides. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sure. Now, one got a little older, so I was like, okay, I need to invest in a new one. So oh, and oh. the other one. Oh, okay. I eventually got rid of it and then got the SIG. Oh, okay. And you said you have the SIG what? 229, uh, the Legion edition. Oh, okay. Legion. Oh, the Legion. That's actually pretty that's, nice. That's yeah. beautiful. I got it because it looks. I mean, yeah. I, I see that while you were in Germany, you got spoiled. I'm guessing, do you drive a Beamer? No, I don't. I can't afford it. Okay, you can't afford a Beamer. Okay, so you're driving. You're in Detroit. Are you driving an American car? Of course, I am driving an American car. Okay, what what is as it? well as well Ford Fusion? Oh, as well. Wait a second. What does that mean? <laughs> I have a Civic as well. Oh, Honda uh -oh. Civic. Okay, no, yeah. no, no, no. Honda's awesome. Can't <laughs> you know? I can't knock Hondas or whatever. Ooh. So the, oh, yeah. I've had Civic a Honda Civic. Pause, pause, pause. Civic SI. You didn't hear the whole thing. Oh, excuse ah. me. Oh, well. You know something, Hank? I, of all the cars I've owned <laughs> over my years, I've never owned, not, not for any particular reason, but I've never owned myself a Japanese car. I, it just Jap never happened. No just, Japanese car? It just never happened. It wasn't on purpose. It just, wow. it just never happened. You know, I oh. don't know. We got to get you some kind of jet. Wait a second. Well, no. Wow. Uh, Fiat, never... Fords, Chryslers, yeah, Chevrolets, yeah. But Subarus. But you never. And my son has one, yeah. But I've never, I myself, I've never had a Japanese-made car. I mean, it oh. just didn't happen. Okay. okay. Oh, didn't run across the right I, deal, I guess. I, don't I think you need to get a Type R. I think I need like you know? an Acura NSX. <clears throat> NSX. NSX. Okay, I I will second that. If you make it, uh, the. I'll even, uh, I'll even take an old school one too. That'll that'll work. Yeah. No, the old school ones are really awesome. But um, yeah. if you get a new one, you can make it the Safety Harbor Firearms vehicle. <laughs> which you know and then I should be able to drive it oh you're gonna take stuff to the post office with it is that what you're gonna do yeah absolutely <laughs> I will drive it for you you know make UPS. Sure it's clean. <laughs> barrels be hanging out the windows and stuff you know as you're going to UPS <laughs> yeah so that's cool I've had I've had a few Jap uh, you know Japanese cars including um, like I've had Isuzu. the Isuzu yeah I had an Isuzu which was awesome Isuzu via cross yeah very rare anybody, actually you know. that'd be a collector yeah. car one day actually Absolutely. I've got a Toyota 4Runner right now, but I had two Hondas. I had a Honda Civic, a 92 Honda Civic, which was like, basically I bought it for 500 bucks and put like over $5,000 into it. Oh, well, that's true. <laughs> that oh, was yeah. an experience. Yeah. And then one of my most favorite cars was a Honda S2000, which is one of the greatest cars in yeah. the world. That's collectible also. Except, you're right. You're right. Except for the SI. Oh, okay, Homer. I, I you know the SI is cool. But there's That's... nothing cheaper, faster on the market than the SI. There is nothing cheaper than the SI. That is stick and that's faster. Okay, okay, I can't argue that. I gotta give you props for that. That's true. <laughs> you know, stick shift. Every man should know how to drive a stick shift. Well, yeah, you know. every woman should too. But yes, that's yeah. true. I totally agree with that as well. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so here's the now I totally forgot what I was going to ask you. See how that happens? No. Oh, we were t we were talking about you know we were talking about um we were talking about smart guns. Yeah. So what's oh. the deal with smart guns? You know, we don't like smart guns. We don't like the idea of it. I think uh, people have tried to introduce smart guns before. And one of the reasons why in the gun community we came out against the smart guns is that, um, you know, we feel like once there's viable smart guns out there that people will try to create laws and make us all have to go the route of the smart gun. And we just don't think it's a good idea. Where do you come down on that, Omar? So the point of the Second Amendment is the militia, right? You are allowed to have a militia. And the point that I, you know, from an engineering point of view, actually, Hank, let me stop here. How technical am I allowed to get? Oh, you can get as technical as you want. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so let's let I'm going to take this step by step. So first of all, you know, most of our counselors around the world have um, EMP, especially in, in in any of the danger zones. They have this device where they can, you know, if somebody's following them, they can just press a button in their yeah. the ambassador's car, and and the cars behind get disabled. That's that right. is. An EMP pulse. That's simple as that. And obviously, 
we know of these technology and it's fairly common. In, okay, so in, you're saying that like the bodyguards and stuff like that for dignitaries, for diplomats and etc. They have those. I was abilities. actually talking about. I was talking about our diplomatic missions. Like our okay, okay. American our American okay. diplomatic missions okay. across the globe. That's from what I know. You know what I've read. That's one of the most common application of EMP. And you know, okay. a militia. If you have a, some a device that you get, you know, EMP can destroy, then it defeats the purpose of a militia. That's on one side, the technical argument of why it doesn't make sense for those laws to be created. So we have, you know, if we ever get to that point, there are laws and there's logic behind getting to that. But there's more important reasons. So this is a replica of um, Glock 17. Now let's, you know, actually, better example, if you raise yours up, whichever okay. one, pick any one up. There we go, there we go. When, um, when do you start trusting it? How many rounds do you have to go through it before you actually start trusting it? Hey, then whenever I decide to pull the trigger, it's gonna fire to, to save my life. Give me a number. At least a thousand. There you go, that was exactly my number. That's why it's so hard, it's so expensive for me to buy a new gun. So let's talk about thousand, that, let's keep that number, thousand impacts. Mm -hmm. So when we make, when we work on airbag systems, um, airbag is a single use item. Okay. What that means is, is if it's in a crash, you have to replace it. Okay. Why? Because it has seen that impact. Now I want you to get, I'm going to make it a little bit more technical. I want you to envision, because I don't have one to show you here, that green sent a circuit board, right? It mm -hmm. has all those little things on top of it which are soldered on top of it. Right. Imagine those things being hit thousand times minimum. Mm -hmm. That is the technical problem, and I'm gonna explain it a little bit. The most common application that the left uses to, hey, of course smart guns can work, my car's keyless system works. That's true, but to really simulate a gun, a smart gun, what you need to do is take a hammer, Mm -hmm. And every time you press the unlock button, you smash the car with the hammer, this exact portion where the lock is, because it needs that impact. Right. And tell, then tell me which cars lock and cars will work after maybe, I don't know, 20 hits? Yeah. And yeah, now or you're trying 50 to take, or 100 or 500 or 1,000. Yeah, I see where you're going. That's a good, yeah. E even if 1,000. So the point of the matter is on those circuit board are those little pieces little components, there are resistors, there are transistors, there's micros, all those are pasted on top of it. There's nothing out there that we know of that is able to impact that kind of repeated exposure mm -hmm. to impact and then stay solid on their place. Mm -hmm. That's the problem with smart guns. Right. Anytime you point. need a smart gun, anytime you need any electronics, you need, you, even if you miniaturize it, you know, and that is the solution. Eventually, that if it ever happened, is probably going to be extremely miniaturized, where everything is built onto the same board. But that hasn't happened in a firearm yet. The only company that claims to have done it that has done it with a .22. Okay. A .22 is not a defense firearm or a, a battle-ready firearm. Mm -hmm. When you get to a forty cal, when you get to a fifty cal, when you get to ten millimeter, okay, then we can actually have a conversation. So right now, I'm not saying it's impossible because nothing's impossible, mm -hmm. but it has not been done by anybody where you can repeatedly trust your firearm, where electronics can handle such impacts repeatedly, you know, minimum a thousand. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to get back up to the you know, less tech 40,000 level view. No company has created a system which can ha happen, take repeatable impacts to this level. Great example. Automotive industry is extremely advanced, but we build that same system for single use. We haven't even thought of building something for a thousand users. Okay, that's yeah. it. That's my argument of why. No, that's. I think that's. A, I think that's a good point. Go ahead. For me, I'm just saying nothing is possible. Being an engineer, I know nothing is impossible. But no organization in any industry has yet demonstrated that repeatability of consecutive reliability after impacts. Right. I designed this device to be dropped. I don't ask people to drop it, but I know if you're handling it in the stress, it's gonna drop. So it can handle a few impacts, but that's four feet. 
Mm-hmm. It cannot handle thousand right hammer blows. Yeah. So if someone beats now, what does happen with it if if someone does that? Does it just lock down? Which one? No, your this. key will still work. Your so key the key, will still the work. key is the only way that you'll get yeah. into it. What kind of um, warranty do you give with it? Speaking of that, I mean, obviously, I'm not trying to encourage anyone to abuse it. One one year standard manufacturer. That there's no yeah. frills or you know there's you know, we we value okay. our work and you know any any high end car that you get into is probably done by the same manufacturers that develop that make this product. So you know I did I'm not remember. Um, earlier, what was saying about sit, about making money? It's not about paying money. It's about paying off debt to be able to get to the next level. Right. Absolutely. I think you make a good argument against the smart gun. Um, you know, we should definitely call on you. I don't know if there's anyone that calls on you when the when the smart gun debate heats up, as so it Hank, does from Hank, time to do you, time. Do you, huh? do you want Do you want your guns to be controlled by somebody with a with a pulse device that can shut them down at any moment? Absolutely not. I think that's. I think and once that's they do that, saying. once they do that, fries electronics. It doesn't come back to life. You know, hey, all happy and yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Mean, so I, I that's, agree that's with the that. downside of that. It's kind of yeah, like, kind of like you know, the people want to hook their 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 power to the power company and let the power company regulate your when you can come on and when you can go off to save a couple dollars. Not me. I don't want the power company to be able to turn me off whenever. <laughs> You know, that's, yeah. the, that's the way I think about the smart gun thing. Or smart car is the same way, you know. Well, can, what do you define the smart car as? Yeah. Did you hear that, Walter? What, what do you define? What, what's defined as? I mean, no, not like where, where you can just let go of the wheel and it drives itself. Oh, self-driving. Yeah, that's that's not new. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Oh, you don't because, like it? No, because what, like what happens if they decide that you're not driving the day? Well, who decides? <laughs> the, the man, the uh, government. Well, Elon Musk's hacker. bunch, or whoever, whoever designed the car and built the car, it's all going to be, um, you know, it has a uh, Wi-Fi and everything else, like you'd have for, like in my car, you have OnStar, right? They oh, can turn the car, they can unlock right. the car. Well, they could turn the car off too. Yeah, they can definitely shut they it. They can down. turn their car off anytime they want. Yeah, they know uh, where you're at. Right, right, right. So yeah. that's what I mean. It 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 takes. So, if you're willing to let your, if you're willing to step back and let them somebody else be in charge, then sure. I well, it's a trade-off, right? It's a trade-off. Right. I don't it's know what you're. The, the other trade-off is that you know I want to be able to, not have to constantly think while I'm driving. I like to relax a little bit. I don't. I can't afford a chauffeur or anything like that. I mean, I, then again, I can't afford that hundred thousand dollar, hundred plus thousand dollar car. Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna say, if you can't afford afford a chauffeur, you probably can't afford the expensive car either. But eventually, I'd like see because the way I look at it is that is no different than this. It's a sensor. You know, mm-hmm. sensor is garbage in, garbage out. Whatever you put in there is what's gonna validate it. Yeah. And the one that they're using in the cars is mostly the. I think it's the vision, and and you know, there's a lot that's possible. So I guess point I'm trying to say is I'm not necessarily against. You know, somebody else drive my car. I can't afford it that at that at that at right now. From but from an engineering point of view, it needs to happen eventually. Um, okay. Yeah, I think I think that that's I think it's already happening. First of all, that there are smart cars out there. Would I get in? Would I buy a smart car for the reason of it being a car that could drive itself? I don't really think so. No. I'm not into it. I don't have that much trust in it. And, you know, if I wanted to do something that someone else was driving it, you could take an Uber, get on a train, a bus. And I'm glad yeah, you yeah. said that. I'm glad you mentioned that because the point of automated driving is to get rid of the Uber driver. Mm-hmm. It has nothing to do with your what you buy. You know, I'm always going to buy a car with gasoline because mm-hmm. I, I need that sound to be able to drive and be able to stay calm and whatnot. I don't think I could feel the electro- electric cars. Oh, but okay. So you're saying you don't like electric cars? Oh, no, I don't think so. Did oh, he say that? I didn't hear him say that. Yeah, he did. I, don't, he I do said, not like it. I do not yeah. like it. I need... Oh, okay. Okay, so you... you but wait a second. You don't like the electric cars, but you do like the idea of a car that drives itself. I do want to be... Not okay. have to focus on driving, yes. Yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think there's some people that can totally do that. I think it's how we go about it, and we realize there's lots of things that, that are getting hacked. Look at, all, look at all the stuff that's getting hacked right now in our society. 
Yeah. Well, all the, all the things are supposed to be safe, right? Yeah, you know, that's yeah. the big thing that bothers you know, put me. Put it up in the cloud. It's safe. Put it up in the cloud. Okay, sure. See what happened there, huh? Yeah, you're, I mean, you're, we're, you're always see, we're always seeing, um, you know, um, booty pics and stuff like that. Well, that's from what I'm getting at. I mean, people yeah. shouldn't be doing that anyways, but they do. And then when it happens, they're like, well. No, wait. What, what do you mean people shouldn't be doing that? Well, putting that up into the cloud. You can do whatever oh. you want at home. I don't care about that. If you yeah. want to take your pictures and throw them out in the street, that's fine with me. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, you can put them up in the cloud. You know, every now and Go then. Go ahead. Put them up in the yeah. cloud. But every now and then I enjoy a good leak. <laughs> right now there's a whole bureau in China trying to get in that cloud. That's true. So, yeah. And they, and they got millions of people that, to working on it. So, hey, yeah. go for yeah. it. If you're a celebrity, you don't, you know. If you put your picture in the cloud, you get what you get. Well, also, Sorry. some celebrities, I think, want, you know, it's like how celebrities call the paparazzi on themselves. I think some some celebrities want to do that, and I think there Have are. Have you noticed benefits. something? Ever since um our the our, our Ken Kardashian got jumped in Paris, you haven't seen her much on the internet, have you? No, she's still on the internet. She makes a good. No, but she's not like she was before. Then she was fucking everywhere before she got jumped and and and, ra and, and robbed in Paris. She's not everywhere all over the internet anymore. She was on the internet crying the other day. Yeah, but you know they had butt pictures and tit pictures and this and that. Yeah, <laughs> it was a constant flow of Kim Kardashian's oh, ass. I think she's got better security now. I think she learned a lesson. Yeah, I think she learned some stuff about security. Uh -huh. But they are, but, but all the Kardashians are up on the internet. So oh, yeah, because that. What else? They, they don't make any money any other way, so they have no other yeah. talent. So. But I think that there are benefits. So for example, with the cloud, there are benefits to the cloud. Should you put the things you care the most about up on the cloud? I don't think so. Would I put my company secrets on the cloud? Hell no. I don't put like, so for example, I make videos and that's very important. Most of my videos are stored in hard drives and I have backups to my backups and stuff like that, but it's all, it's, it's in hard drives. I do though share those videos sometimes on the cloud. So if I went off somewhere and um, like I did the Brownells thing or some other stuff and, and the other guys I'm working with are like, hey, I want to, can I get access to that video you shot? Then I put it up on the cloud. So there's benefits to it that way. Um, and I think some people see benefits to smart cars. You know, I don't have a problem, for example, with let's say they made highways where you can drive your car into a thing on the highway. Something comes and hooks onto it and then everyone's cars are just flowing on the highway. I, I would have a little bit more confidence in that, but not 100%. The whole thing about a car to me is me having total control over my destiny. And if I want to like watch a movie, I probably shouldn't be in that car watching a movie. If I right. wanted to go to sleep, I shouldn't, you know, I shouldn't that's be not in the should car be driving. sleeping either. Yeah, but that's how I feel about it. But I, under I, I, I understand the technology being out there and people liking sure. the idea of that. You know? It all goes with the artificial intelligence stuff and all that. So yeah, it's all it's all progressing. Yeah, you yeah. know. Um, so I'm not I'm not knocking you for that. I think it's interesting though, Omer, that you don't like the electric cars, but you like the self driving. How many how many cars like that exist? Zero. Yeah. <laughs> so you got. So is this is this something you're planning on designing one day? No, I, I just want to get the Type R. That's all I care. Oh, oh. <laughs> right, right. I mean, the sound. Wait, yeah, yeah, but the, yeah, the Type. Yeah, I would like to have a Type R also. The type I, have, R. I, I just saw it today, actually, a black one. But he wants ten on top of the sticker. I was like, no way. Oh, you over ten. Yeah, that. yeah. We saw them. Walter and I. Have you ever been to SEMA show? You're. I know you're. You're in the car industry, or you were. In the car no, industry. I've never been to SEMA show. No. Oh, okay. Yeah, that would be a fun show for you if you're really, really yeah. a serious car it's guy. Always a cool stuff there, yeah. Yeah, Walter and I are actually going in a couple of weeks. Yep. Wait, where is it? Gonna... Huh? Where is it? It's Lost. in Vegas. Lost Wages. Oh, okay. Yeah, Vegas. Are Are you going to be, speaking of that, are you going to be coming out to Vegas for SHOT Show next year? I'm, this will be my third year, yes. Oh, okay. So you are at SHOT Show. Do you have a booth when you're there? I do, yes. Oh, cool. You, you have your own booth or are you sharing a booth with someone? How does that? I have my own booth. Awesome. Okay, so we, we should go visit Omer in his booth. Sure. sure. We'd love to have you. Yeah, we absolutely we, we will do that now. And, and, we'll come and then for all the people out there, just to let you know, I'm looking for three to four uh, people and ideally to come and help me at the booth. You, wait a second. You're looking for booth models? Yes. 
Okay, do they have to be do they have to be women or can they be like just sexy dudes? Do I have do I have to do I have to illustrate everything else? <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 so you're saying no sexy dudes. <laughs> so I'm getting the vibe of no dudes. <laughs> Uh, I, didn't yeah, I mean, I was gonna vol I was gonna say, hey, I would volunteer, but apparently, you're not looking for guys that look like me or Walter to do that kind of job, right? I have my own boot to take care of, so I can't. <laughs> I can't yeah. So that. my problem is, guys, what I'm looking for is some somebody who's not an engineer, an introvert, and that. So for me, oh. my safe place is inside the boot. Oh, 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 okay. Regardless of what what gender, I'm looking for people who are who are who enjoy being outside. Right. Uh, but you're not doing, I know you said you're introverted, but you're not doing so bad on the show today. I don't think, Thank you know. You. Is, oh, it easy, is it easy because we're like over the internet or something? I have no idea who else is watching. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> talking to you. They're just looking, uh, at a, looking at a screen talking back. Right. Yeah, that's yeah, absolutely. So I just no. want to remind everyone, if you guys are interested in the Identilock, we do have a link that's in the description that you all could um, follow in order to get your, to buy an Identilock. And for the next two weeks, if you use the code Hank Strange, all lowercase, you can actually get free shipping when you buy it. Freebies. So. Free, free expedited shipping. Free expedited shipping, there you go. So I wanna encourage everyone that's watching right now to click the thumbs up button, share this video, and uh, you know, help us keep it going. So I think I think we well covered the whole thing about the the uh, smart guns. I think smart guns are a no. Technology won't exist for smart guns for maybe another thousand years. Well, <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't think it'd be that long. But I but here here's here's the deal. If you want one, great, go get one. But don't tell me I have to have one. If you want to drive a smart car. Well, that's not possible. The whole, the, whole, the whole smart car thing won't work unless everybody's driving one. That, because, that yeah. won't, sorry, I'm sorry. Well, that won't work because if anybody gets it, it kicks in the New Jersey law. The New Jersey law says that if anybody in any part of the country is able to sell a smart gun, which is ATF approved, yada, 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 then every dealer within three years in New Jersey would have to sell a smart gun. Oh wow. Yeah. So if someone if someone actually came up with that and successfully sold it or just even sold one, it would the whole of New Jersey would have that's the stupidest law I ever heard of. And Jersey has a lot of stupid ass laws. I was gonna say welcome New Jersey. Yeah. That's really <laughs> silly. But you know, don't think that we all of a sudden won't have those laws in other places. Oh, I'm surprised goes. California oh. doesn't have that law yet, but <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, do they? Does California have that? I don't think. I don't know. Yeah. 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 You know, so yeah, that's the whole thing. I mean, that, that, but you know, I, I think that people should have a choice of if they want to do things or not. Um, there's already, I mean, the Tesla already has cars that drive itself. And that, it's hasn't there worked, that hasn't worked very well so far. So Yeah, it's killed a few people. <laughs> no, that's people all. Died. Just a couple yeah. died. That's okay. Yeah. But listen, in, in the development of cars, people died. Oh, you dear. know, for the over Here 100 years, for the over the 100 years that we've had cars, people have died. The same thing with planes. To develop yes, planes, have. people died. But nobody, I, those people, they didn't claim they drove themselves and got killed. Either, um, so that's, yeah, that's there's true. planes that fly themselves. Model T didn't say it drove itself. No. Hmm? <laughs> What? I'm saying, I'm saying, if you make the claim that the car is going to take care of you and it doesn't take care of you, there's a problem. Okay. Yeah, uh, I'm not I mean, sure. I'm not saying the Tesla say the car was going to take care of you. I think they want. Well, people. I mean, in this self-driving thing, mm -hmm. you know, or self whatever, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's far from being ready for throwing at your grandma. Okay, you know, as yeah. a replacement. You know, it's just not going to. I don't think it's. Yeah, I think. Right. I think the technology is moving along fast with it, but I'm with you. I'm not interested in it. Yeah, but should it that. should it not exist at all? I don't know. I mean, I think technology, you know, has the right to exist just like everything else. Oh, I you know? that. Like I said before, if you want to have one, great. Go yeah. for it. You know, <laughs> you know I'm not going to stop you. If you want an electric car, go for it. Great. I don't want one. Yeah, that's how, and there's, but there's certain applications that may or may not be good for people. So, for example, transport, you know. Not going to help me tomorrow. 
I know, but what I'm saying to you, not transport for you, but I'm saying um, like UPS trucks. You're just trucks, driving a couple miles like, to work, or you're driving yeah. a couple miles to school, or or UPS or, trucks or Walmart. Yeah, that's trucks. not going to work either. Actually, the technology is not there to, to sustain a UPS truck all day long. Not there. Okay. <laughs> they do it. They'd be doing it if they could. Yeah, I don't think the technology is 100% there right now, but when we're moving in that direction. Right now, UPS trucks are... Let me see. Do you, want, do you want 2,000 pounds of batteries on the truck, or do you want 2,000 pounds of paid goods you're delivering? You tell right. me. No, I you won't choose, that. You won't choose the batteries. Yeah. You won't yeah. I, no, I understand all that, <laughs> but right now, the UPS drivers drive by a GPS. Now, it's a person. It's a combustion. That's simple technology. That's nothing that's... Yeah. That's that's been in the works for thirty years. So I mean, you know, it's, you know, yeah. I mean, you, I mean, you could use your phone to do that. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, we have the we have the smart guy here that actually knows a little bit more that about the this. GP, the GPS system was a military thing. You know, that's why it came about. It didn't come about to tell you how to get to work. Um, yeah, but how quickly are we all use? So when the GPS really, when was the military using GPS mostly before we were? How long ago was that? Probably early 90s, late 80s. Okay, so let's say 30 years ago. Today, yeah. we all use GPS every single day. And I think well, on that on that note, someone yeah. asked us, Omer, whether or not you could put a GPS into this. Oh, yeah, simple. <laughs> yeah, I'll which I think you could, that. right? Can I? I'm not looking to make it connected, right? Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't want to, I would I don't know. I guess someone wanted to know, like, so for example, if it got stolen, but I don't think that would help, right? Because if someone really stole this and they wanted to get the gun out of this. They, they can use Dremel and get it out, yes. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. So I don't know that a GPS, I mean, maybe like in in the first like 10, 15, 20 minutes or something like that, it might help to recover it, but not really well, after might, that. It might help you point you in the right direction, but I don't think it'll help yeah. you rec I've never I've never heard of somebody who's been able to recover their iPhone because it was because of find my iPhone app so uh, I, I don't I heard know. of that I heard of that happen yeah me too I heard it happen they come knock on the door and say, hey you got my phone it's like huh what do you mean <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. but the, the GPS te the GPS technology is is as simply as simple as a small little chip it's not like it's back in the old days where you had a big yeah, how saver. fast would GPS burn down this battery if it was running? Well, it depends on how often, right? Yeah. Is it all the time? Yeah, quite fast. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But that, that's really the trade-off, right? What, what exactly? Right? So right. yes, it, I mean, I could have this cook you a meal, but what's the point of that? What's the I mean, benefit this, of it? Yeah. Right. It's just, you know, it's always a trade-off, right? Because this is yeah. it's not a theft prevention device. Once we get to that level, yeah, then we can put put stuff like that in there. Mm -hmm. But you know, those are honestly, Hank. For me, those are the easy things. It's getting this part easy and quick and accessible and robust is what what right. you know my first goal was. Right. Yeah. So someone wants to know. Um, so I think someone was asking whether or not there's a key lock on it, which there is. But I think right. someone else was asking if there's a way to put the key inside of it. <laughs> So if you, but that's, I don't know if that's really going to help because if you can't get in, <laughs> yeah, if you're locked out, having you, a key. yeah, right. yeah. So no, you cannot put a how key many keys inside does it. it. How many keys does it come with? Two. Two. Okay. And, and there's, the key, key, keys are numbered. Mm -hmm. And if you look on, if you turn the lock on the front side, mm -hmm. remove it from the gun, the other side, the other side. Yeah. Okay. Totally the other yeah. side. That's totally Flip the other right side. here. Okay, yeah, right, right here. Uh -huh. That okay. right. Oh, you can't see it, but the key number is listed on the top side of that. I'm oh, okay. Let me see. Oh, I, is it? Uh, let me see if I can. Don't see. Yeah, right there. Oh, oh it's right here. It. It's right here. Let me see if I can get it to focus and show us that. I, you can you can lightly see that there's something right here. Right. That's the number of the key and the serial number. Okay. And I don't know if people can see me. That same number is I'm on I'm going to lock side. it on you so people can see. Okay. So if you do lose the keys, like let's say your wife throws out the box or something. <laughs> I can call I can call you up. I'm just I'm asking for a friend, not for me. Yeah. I, I don't I don't have a way of being able to retrieve the same key right now. Oh, okay. 
I do not have a way to do that because yeah. uh, these are high security keys and I can't afford to maintain that database. Yeah, put the key in a safe place. <laughs> that's that's uh, my professional advice to you, put the key in a safe place. Right. <clears throat> and remember so, where that safe place is. Yeah, then make a reminder on your phone of where that safe place is. Then back your phone up to the cloud. <laughs> then it write it down cloud. and bury it in a box in the backyard. <laughs> Lola says she has the box. There's that cloud. That's what There's she that says. Lola, Lola's telling me she just put a note up there that she has the box. She moved the box from, from, from my safe location that I put the box into to some location for her. So there you go. Yeah. Um, now cool. let's see if there's let's see if there's other uh, questions here that people wanted to talk about. Um, put the key in the so uh, Ken Helmer says put the key in the box hand the box to wife. Yeah, you know? <laughs> right. Yep. I have uh, something else mm -hmm. to talk about. Um, one thing I wanted to show everybody was that you know the key has a cover. So what you you know. This one does not have a cover, and this one has a cover, so it ships with a cover that you can put on. So if the people don't know, if the kid doesn't know there's a key in there, they're never going to turn it. They're never even going to be able to hack it. Um, the second thing is, I don't have any solenoid in here, or any motors or anything like that. Um, to to give you a technical answer, I, I'm sure you most of you have heard about how that uh, recently the the smart gun was hacked using a magnet. Well, right. I had thought of that way long ago, and I didn't want to use that technology. It's called solenoid, and, and that's how it was able to, they were able to hack it. I took a long time searching for a technology that would allow me to be quick enough, power, and then and that would have been the solenoid. But I knew solenoid is easy to hack, so I looked on, and of all the places I found this on NASA's Mars rover. So mm -hmm. let me say this again. On NASA's Mars rover, when it moves the solar panel, is used this technology called shape memory alloy, and that's what's in here. So you can't really? easily hack it with a, a, just so that you can't easily hack it with a magnet. Oh, so this has like a, so the 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 mechanism that's opening this up it has something to do with uh, shape memory. Yes, it is a shape memory alloy. Really, that's yes. interesting. So this is like highfalutin technology up in here. And not only that, the process the processor in here is the same thing as your phone. The battery in here is the same thing as your phone. This technology is not in this industry. The sensor right here is twice as big as an iPhone sensor. So and it's coated with a special sensor where it, so that it can handle moisture much much better. So I'm sure people are asking about blood. Not with you know it won't work with blood, but if you wipe it and then touch it, and then it'll work. Okay, so yeah. I am a geeky geek, and yeah, I put so there's a lot there. of yeah. There's a lot of technology in that, which is cool. I mean, I didn't. That's something I didn't realize. This is like um, the gun guy's version of Tang. Remember <laughs> Tang? You know, you know right. that's like the special orange juice that the yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely. astronauts. <laughs> absolutely. Use. Yeah. Sh and what I is like that again? Sh shape metal technology. Shape memory alloy. Yeah. There you go. Shape shifting. <laughs> that's literally what it's doing. Literally, yeah. that's exactly what it that's, does inside. Yeah, a thousand okay. years from now, when transformers actually exist, we could say that this was like <laughs> this was the beginning of the transformer technology. No, that's well, pretty it cool. Be. It wouldn't be. It would be NASA, right? NASA put it in Mars rover. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the Mars rover. But this was our. They, this was they did the first they commercial. Did it. Yeah, the first is that the first commercial application of it, or is that uh, is that technology been used in the automotive industry or some other industry? It has been used in automotive industry. I have not put in here anything that hasn't been validated in the automotive industry for years. Right. Okay. Yeah, and just for for folks joining us, uh, Omer started out in the auto industry, right? You started out designing airbags, airbag control modules, the computers that decide if it's a crash, if it's a if it's a pothole, whatnot. I designed those things. Yeah. So now, I mean, so if, if there's people out there that have questions about the price and stuff like that, um, you know, what do you have to say to what do you have to say to questions with the price? 
There's it's obviously a lot. Yeah. It's $239. Okay. Um, I mean, it's much cheaper than any gun that I know of. And look at the technology. You pay 650 for your phone or more. Uh, I had no other way and you know, to make it cheaper. It is, you know, it's the, again, the idea is not me making money here. And the idea is to pay off the debts. Right. So shut up and play your guitar wants to know, will an EMP kill this item and keep it closed? Or will it keep it closed? What happens Key. in an EMP situation? Key. So let no. So let's say that an EMP happens. <clears throat> Does it? Will it open in that event, or would it stay closed? Then you have to use the key. It will stay closed. Okay. Have you tested this? Yes. Oh. I have not tested with EMP. I have tested it by by failing the mechanisms. Yes. Okay. So if the mechanism fails, it remains in the closed position on. Yes until you use the key, right? Yeah, and yeah. so the Tyvin show being a wise ass that he usually is here, says <laughs> that he can he can open this up in 30 seconds. So, you know, I mean, he's a little bit of a knucklehead if you know the <laughs> Tyvin show. So what is your response to that, Omer? Is he a teenage kid or no, a young No, he's child? not a teenage kid, no. no then it doesn't a, matter. He's a like, not former, former military truck driving dude who I'm sure would just smash it with a big massive hammer or something like that and go, yeah, see, I opened it. Right, so that's his, that's his right to do that if, he will, if he's willing to do that. The purpose of this is young kids, right. and that's, what, that's the only real thing it exists for, to prevent, and in 30 seconds, by the way, I wish you would have said this faster, but in 30 seconds, that will give you enough time to run away in case he is really threatening. Right. In case someone has their hands on this and then they're trying to get into it. You have to, 30 uh, seconds from the person who's really, I don't know what words you use, what kind words you use for him. But, you know, in a normal situation, it's probably going to take a little longer than that for sure. Um, and that'll give you enough time for flight. So in any yeah. situation, again, this is not a theft prevention device. I've never claimed it to be. Yeah, it's, not, the, it's not. It doesn't like fulfill all purposes, right? I don't think there's anything out there that does that. Right. I, I mean, mean, you know, if the same the same person can take pretty much any safe and then destroy it and also in 30 seconds. Yeah, absolutely. I think what it is, there's safes out there that you can either put in like a code, you know, you move your fingers and you do a little dance yeah. and you get in, or they have a fingerprint scanner. You, you, you scan your fingerprint, then the door drops down and you put your hand in, pull the gun out. I think the point of this is as Omar is saying that um, you know if you've got kids or other people around the home that you don't want to get into this unauthorized, obviously if someone's really going to go out of their way, they're going to get into it. But to prevent like an accidental discharge situation from happening, especially with younger kids, then you have something like this. If you feel like you, no, none of us are trying to force you to buy it, but if you feel like you need that, you have something, and then if you need access to it, it's the kind of thing that you know you can. Just easily have it, get into it and, uh, you know, use it when you need it kind of situation. So there you yeah, go. Second, I want to I wanna make sure you said that this thing is weighted to fall off. Right. So it is that quick. It's literally weighted. So right now it's off, off. So now you press the button and it falls off. So the draw time is the same as a holster. That is the... That's the key point here. It's not about how you can, you know, it's gonna, it solves all problems. No, it doesn't. It's for very specific use, which is parents who want to prevent the children from getting to the gun. Right. Okay. Absolutely. So there you go. If you guys have any other questions about it, um, you know, um, I see Greg Carithers saying I would want to keep a mag in the well and one in the chamber only. The trigger locks for safety and fast access on a home intrusion, for example, just my opinion, not sure the mag drop would help or hurt. So I think that's something I was talking about before, you know, so far as if the magazine comes out of there, but you know, um, I don't, I, I think you were saying that when you guys designed it, you didn't necessarily want to design something that would also lock in the mags. That would be more cumbersome to have all those other things around it. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, so I think Tyvin Show is saying it would be great around kids, no one gets hurt. So that's the key problem. Yeah. Yeah. If you've got if you've got someone like the Tyvin Show who can't open it with his fingerprints or the key. <laughs> They've been taken off already. What are you talking about? Tyvin didn't know those fingerprints. Come on. 
Oh yeah, his fingerprints. Yeah, his fingerprints have been erased a long time ago. Yeah. Um. So I think also people would like to know if it's been tested on the different weather conditions. So is it is the device itself uh, waterproof or can it stand up to a certain amount of heat? Let's say if you're leaving it in the car. Yes, you can leave it in the car. That's not a problem. Um, okay. Even in Arizona, um, in cold weather, it will drop a uh, battery a lot faster than in normal. Performance of the device is no difference in any of those conditions. That's okay. Specific. All right. And then just but, go over one time for us really quickly, uh, what guns are they available for right now? So all the double stack Glocks except Glock 30 okay. and obviously not the single stack Glocks. That's the same model that you're holding. Okay. So this won't work on a Glock 42 or 43 at this time. Correct. Glock, Glock yeah. 41, I'm sorry, Glock 42, Glock 43, and 30. 30, 30 okay. is wider. Okay, 30 is a little bit thicker. Okay. Right. Okay. Other than that, this, this, as far as we know, this fits all the other Glocks. Then we have a 1911 version that fits all standard 1911s. We have uh, one unit for um, Smith & Wesson Shield, another unit for Smith & Wesson M&P and SD9. And then finally, one for six hour two two nine. Okay, cool. I'm getting a lot of comments of uh, people saying that something for the car would be nice. Awesome. So that's uh, I've got at least like three or four of those um, just in the last couple of minutes here on the comments. Okay, cool. So do we I, do we want to quickly go over some stuff? That's how do you feel about talking about stuff in the news, Omer? I don't want to you know. Obviously, you're you know you're the head of a company here. I don't want to make you talk about things. That would make you feel uncomfortable, but we like to look at the news and see what's going on in the world out there. A wacky world. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So you know we can uh, we can hit a couple of things here. It looks like. Are you into Star Wars? I am. I saw that com the, <laughs> the the trailer. The trailer that came out. I'm yeah, all I, confused. Yeah, I haven't seen it, so I guess I, I haven't seen it either. It. Everybody's been telling me about it, but I haven't watched yeah. it yet. Lola, I'm gonna, okay. Hank, I'm going to bail out of here. Okay. Because um, I got to finish getting ready and. All right, Walter. And um, all that good stuff and go buy some fuel. And all right. All yeah, stuff. you're heading out tomorrow to Knob Creek. Yep. 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 Yeah. Just, uh, yeah, just uh, right around the Louisville area. So. Right. So go uh, ahead and give your pitch yeah. for Knob Creek and for folks to come out there and see you. Come out and see us at the creek. You know, if you're going that way, I have some patches with me, you know. Get you so, a Trump rooster. Yeah, say hello. Just don't walk by, you know, like some people do. Yeah. Say hello, and um, yeah, we're gonna be there all weekend long. So, um, yeah. come by. Yeah, I invite you guys to go out there, hang out with Walter, get pictures, tag me, get your hands on. You need to send me some more Trump roosters. I'm getting a lot of requests. Oh, okay, all right. Well, yeah, and um, yeah. my my new Flotus patch will be here on Friday too. So, oh, okay, celebrating Absolutely. our first lady's um, liking of stilettos. So. Oh, okay. Very nice. It's, very it's nice. Taste, it's tasteful, though. It's not. Yeah, I haven't seen any sketches or anything of this. So it's when very, you, tasteful. Yeah. very tasteful. When you get them, let me know. Yeah. I'd like to see. I'd like to see what it is. Friday. I'll post some pics on the web when they come. I'm not. Friday. I'm not happy that it's going to be tasteful. I wish it was a little bit. Tasteless. No, I don't have any. I don't have any issues with her. I don't. Nope. Yeah, but I, I like tasteless. But I'm on. I'm on her side. Oh. So, um, <laughs> you know. All right. <laughs> All right, Walter. Thanks for jumping in. All right, nice to meet you over right. there, and uh, good luck with the uh, with your thing. It's kind of cool. Um, Thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I've always seen those kind of things, and I've never really had much exposure to. I'll come by and see it at the shot show. Absolutely, please do. We'll pull you out into the crowd. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> They got to go to the shot show and turn on your, your, your hey, welcome to the 2018 shot show. Here we are. You know. <laughs> then you recoil back in the afternoon. I think Omer is show. right now thinking, mm, maybe I shouldn't have told these guys about being at shot show. <laughs> <laughs> well, right now, this is a big mistake. <laughs> I, think, I think I'm going to find those four people to help me. I'm going to figure it out. Yeah. No, if, if anyone wants to volunteer, let us know. Yeah, not you, Tyvin. Not you. Yeah, uh, no, definitely not Tyvin. <laughs> Tyvin doesn't have big enough, you know what? So um. Yes. Anyways, we'll yeah, see you guys Garcia later. Garcia says lesbianic. Okay. Lesbian <laughs> and, and <laughs> lubricious. Is that what it is? Yeah, and lubricious. Lubricious. Um, it's a long story, Omer. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, don't get involved with this. You're yeah. safer that way. Yeah, stay out of it. Don't don't comment <laughs> at this point. That's my advice. All right. All right, Walter. See you. Be safe, man. Talk to you later. Okay.
All right, cool. So now um, I forgot what we were going to hit on here. Okay, so you saw, you've seen the Star Wars thing, huh? I have. Yeah. Um, I've got it. Let me see if I can see this latest trailer. I'm going to look at this real quick. I'll give you guys my reaction to this trailer and what I what I think about it. There's someone talking. Something truly special. I'm looking. You guys can't even hear what I'm looking at, so I'm just looking at this trailer, so I can. Uh, there's an island. There's a chick on the island that finds Luke, and he's got a robot hand. You know, because the technology is going backwards in the future. You know, and. So she's like training and cracking up the ground. So it's this is a pretty dramatic trailer. I know, but they didn't they didn't give direction on where it's headed. Yeah, it's not. It's de it's like deliberately not trying to tell you anything. It's a teaser, um, not even a teaser, and they're not even calling it a teaser. What do you think about the new bad guy? I forgot what his name is. It even Kalo is. Kaloran. 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 Oh. I he's. Forgot. So what? He's going to be like Darth what? Darth Long Harius. No oh, there's idea. some weird looking creature in here. I don't like that creature. <laughs> Why do they always have to put cute like they always have to try to make a cute creature that no one likes? In these things. This is pretty dramatic, though. Oh, I think I see. So she goes over to the dark side. It seems like she might. They didn't say that she, you, you know, it, it always seems hard. Sure. Yeah, she could potentially go over to the dark side. Um, and it's happened. I did that to Lola. I made Lola convert over to the dark side. So, you know, she could, she could be in love with that dude. I don't understand why. You know, so, okay. Did you like it? Does it, does it make you want to see the movie even more now? It well, a Star Wars kind of have to see it, see it, right? I mean, yeah, it's like it's like this. That's my tax on stupid. It doesn't matter what the movie is. I saw the, you know, the first one were awesome. Then the middle one I had to see anyway because I was yeah. gonna. And now obviously the rest of them. It doesn't seem like this is gonna end anytime soon. So that's good. Yeah, you know what the thing I I know that there's a lot of people that don't like it, but what I'm thinking is since Disney got in there and and um, took over these movies, I feel like they're really putting an effort to making it good. I don't think that George Lucas had any kind of imagination, <laughs> you know. So I know that everyone loves the first movies and all that kind of stuff, and so did I when I was a kid. But I really think like what he did with the next three movies was really crappy. And I feel like they're doing a better job now at going at right. these at these movies. So they at least on this, you know, they're getting better writers and maybe better directors. And no, well, they fire a director after every movie, don't they? Yeah, I think didn't they already? They fired the director somewhere in the middle of two this times. movie. I thought yeah. two times. No, yeah. they fired the one who did the last one. Then there's a new one for this. Oh yeah, so they, they were really in. high hopes up on the one that did the last one, uh, which was. Uh, Okay. So yeah, the last one they fired him. Now somebody else is doing it. I think the last one was pretty decent. Yeah. So. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So that looks, you know, I think they did a good job of the trailer. You know. Right. That's the thing. I think they did a good job of the trailer. It makes me, you know, interested in it. Will I actually go see it in in the movies or wait until it comes out in video? I don't know. So now one of the things I see happening in the news, do you remember like maybe a month or two ago, there was the police officer who was trying to force that nurse to uh, draw blood 
from right. a guy from a guy that was in an accident. I see they fired that guy. Um, you know, this the the nurse refused to draw blood because the guy had to the person they were trying to get the blood from was unconscious, and they had to get his approval to do that. And then she wouldn't do it, so the police officer arrested her. And so that's you know that guy got fired. I see that's going on in the news. You know. There's a, quite a few other things going on. Everyone's talking about Harvey Weinstein. We were just talking about movies. I don't know. None of that surprises me about Hollywood. There's always been that Captain Couch thing, you know, I guess, going on in Hollywood. So, yeah. So, um, uh, Chris B says, Lucas sold the rights to Disney. They just used the name. Um, and then there's something going on here about... Uh, Okay, someone says Harvey Weinstein stars in Casting Couch Wars. <laughs> so I don't know if you heard any of the stuff about Harvey Weinstein going on. I, I don't. I haven't paid attention. No, I've, yeah. heard that, I've seen that name pop up every now and then. Yeah, Harvey Weinstein. I think he. Um, what was the name of the uh, production company? He had a pretty big. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of this production company. That all these. Uh, they've made a lot of big movies lately. A lot of big independent movies. So now there's a lot of actresses and stuff like that coming out and saying that, uh, you know, that whole, that old Hollywood casting couch thing you've always heard about, I guess, was going down. I don't know why any, I'm not, I'm trying to figure out why people are surprised about that because it's Hollywood. So I like movies, but I'm not a fan of Hollywood. So. There you go. That's how I, uh, you know, that's how I look at the whole thing about Harvey Weinstein. Um, don't care about that. Um, we were talking about cars. Looks like they're having issues making the Tesla threes. Did you hear about that? Yeah, I did, and I'm not surprised. I mean, I, you know, I got, I, you know, I'm just talking about my manufacturing problem. It took me more than six months to resolve mine. And my product is not as complex as a car. Yeah. It's close, but not as complex. Oh yeah, cars are incredibly difficult. You know what, I think that um, I think that the Tesla cars are not fully baked in. Obviously they have the government behind them, that's why they still exist. But they're not, they're not going through the normal process that cars and other things out there should go through to actually exist in the world. You know, there's this competitive world of capitalism and they aren't really going through the grinder or whatever you want to call it or the gauntlet or whatever it should be. They're not going through the normal process. They're getting boosted up by the government. And they still they still can't really produce, you know, and they're coming out. Everyone's like, oh, these are the most awesome cars. And I don't really see where they're, they're different from other electric cars that are out there or other hybrid cars that are out there. So I'll tell you how um, they're different. Huh? They're different. I'll tell you how they're different. They're different because they've got amazing marketing. They have amazing marketing machine. Yeah. You know, you know you've got these people in the in Silicon Valley who become, uh, you know, figures that everybody follows just because they're entrepreneurs, and you know they're pretty good at what they do. And obviously, you know, maybe they're not as good as their marketing machines. And he, you know, he's he sneezes and got so much press. Of course, they're gonna, you know, they're gonna sell cars. Yeah, I, you know, I think that um, I totally agree with that. So one more car thing here, because this is interesting, relative to some of the stuff we were talking about. Did you hear the story of the metal falsification scandal? No, I did not. So right um, now, um, the headline of this is metal falsification scandal rocks auto industry. Subaru, Toyota, and Honda. A scandal has rocked the Japanese auto industry. Subaru, Toyota, and Honda all said they use falsified materials supplied from Kobe Steel. So apparently there's this company, Kobe Steel, that supplies aluminum for, the autom for automotive and airplane industry, and it supplied false data about the strength and durability of its aluminum and copper products. The affected products are supplied to some 200 companies including Subaru, Toyota, Honda, and Boeing. Wow. So, yeah. Those are uh, pretty drastic 
Yeah. So there's, you know, I think in the in the in the auto industry, there's a lot of um, stuff like that probably going on. I'm not saying it's rampant, but there's a lot of stuff going on like that, you know. And then, of course, there's stories about like everyone's talking about what happened in Las Vegas. You know, they keep changing. Like, for for instance, I saw the timeline changed um, with this with the shooter. I don't know if you saw that, but. Um, you know, and then there's all kinds of rumors, which I don't want to talk about the rumors and things like that that are out there. Because, you know, I've got to confirm those things, you know, before I actually talk about it, because there's so much uh, fake news and all that kind of stuff going on. But they did change the timeline. And it seems like in when they changed the timeline, the security guard got into something with this shooter before he started shooting at the people in the crowd. So I saw that news was out yesterday. So, you know, um, so there you go. Ken, Ken Helmer says, I can't wait for the Ram Tungsten SRT Hellraiser. I never even heard of that. Yeah, I'm assuming I'm, ass a, I'm not a Ram kind of guy anymore. No, not anymore. No. You used to be? Yeah. That's that was the thing. I mean, now I, I mean, because you know, it's I don't know. I, I kind of feel that's fiat, you know. Oh, you gotta, you gotta <laughs> oh, so you don't fiat Ram SRT, you know, it just doesn't rhyme. Yeah, oh, you, you don't like the fiat part. part of it, right? Yeah. I don't know. Just you know, I mean, Chrysler wasn't that great in quality. I mean, they used to say that fiat and Chrysler found each other, but still, it's just you know, it's not. I don't know. When you add fiat part, I think it, the American portion went away. I think okay. that's how I took it. Yeah. It's a weird thing. I'm not a Mopar guy at all, but I have two um, Chrysler or whatever. What, what do they call it? FCA. I think it's the called FCA. FCA. I have two SVA um, or FCA vehicles. I have a Dodge Challenger. I have the Scat Pack Edition, which I think is cool. Um, it's, you know, it's very comfortable. Nice. You know, I think I've got like 485 horsepower. And all that. I haven't had any big problems with mine so far. And then I wound up getting a pickup truck and I wound up getting the Ram Rebel. And so far that's cool. But you know what I don't like in it? The knob for the transmission. Yeah. And I'm guessing that's like a European thing. No, 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 no. It's a Chrysler thing. It's, it's oh, a that thing. knob is a Chrysler thing? That's a, actually not a Chrysler. It's a Ram thing. Oh, but I thought I've seen that knob in BMWs and all that kind of stuff. The, so instead of a, instead of a shifter. You mean? Yeah, but still, but I think that there's some parts of that car that are mixed in with parts of uh, Mercedes, for example. I think it has a transmission that's in some that's in different because you know I, I think a lot of companies now are really sharing certain parts. Of course, all cars share parts. There, there's no yeah. question about that. The yeah. issue is that who's the integrator? Who's putting it together? What validation yeah. plan are they going through? How yeah. long is the validation plan? How you know, once they validate, after that they make changes, what kind of regression testing they do. Mm -hmm. yeah. That all makes a huge difference, and yeah. it's basically that's where you cut yeah. corners to make timelines. Yeah, or they, they, yeah, they really just don't dig into it. Like I noticed they put, so for example, with the transmission knob on the, and I have to do a video of this, of my truck to review it at some point, but they put the knob for the transmission here, and then right here, like about an inch and a half away from it, is the knob for the radio to turn the radio, the, the volume. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm always going to like I'm listening to the radio. I'm always going to turn it up and going to turn that n transmission knob. <laughs> oh wow! But I haven't actually done it, and I don't even know. I don't even know if I should do it to see what happens. I'm sure they thought of this. I hope. I hope. Yeah. Yeah. I hope they thought about it, but uh, you know. All right, so um, you know what? I, I think that there's, you know, we've been, I think we've been going for, at this for about two hours now. Um, you know, I think I will give you an opportunity here to talk to folks one last time about the Identilock, you know, and why you think that they, you know, what reasons you would give for someone to consider the Identilock for people out there who, who are looking for something like this. So, I mean, all I'll say is this is a pure Detroit product. You know, yes, electronics come from somewhere else, but it's, you know, I designed it in Detroit, I engineered it in Detroit, and to build it, I had to outsource some of the manufacturing. But this is purely a Detroit product. Um, 
it's complex enough to to be only I, I feel to be only built be built in Detroit. Um, to consider this, just understand the function is to keep your family safe from the very gun you bought to protect them. There's nothing else out there that's so reliable and so quick to keep mm -hmm. your firearm safe out of the hands of people you don't want it. Um, and it is much cheaper, much, much cheaper than any of the guns that you would ever buy. Right. So it is definitely much, it's, it's definitely a use. And, and, you know, go to my website or go to any of the places like Cabela's that sell it. People are raving about the product. You just got to feel it yourself and, it, you know, experience yourself to enjoy it. Yeah, absolutely. We're gonna do we're gonna do more testing of it. Of course, we've got one here, you know, and we're available to do more testing of it. So uh, we will do that. Now, one of the things that I would say is that you know I'm not trying to convince anyone to buy one. I know that there are people out there that would balk at the price of it, but just consider, you know, if if you're gonna leave guns laying around and there's a possibility that children will have access to those things. Um, the you know 240 bucks is not that bad you know versus getting into a situation when someone gets hurt and in places here like Florida you're responsible for anything that happens um, to children specifically with your guns so just think about that I'm not trying to make anyone buy anything or do anything absolutely keep them in the safe but if you believe in having things out I would have I would have something on my body at all times that's pretty much what I do I always have something on me, but this is another way that you can have something close by and have it secured, keep it out of the hands of children. It's up to you to make that decision, though, or, or whether or not it's worth it, and it may be worth it versus all the other things that could happen. Um, one of the things I would like to see, go ahead, Omer, what was that? Sorry, let me, let me add, let me, why do you have a gun? Because you're worried about the intruder. If you're worried about the intruder, then you're also worried about somebody breaking into your house when you're not there. What happens to the gun then? Who gets, mm -hmm. you know, who gets active? This at least gives you the option that, you know, they can't use that gun on you because they wouldn't have to take it away to figure out how to get it off. Yeah. So there's a lot of benefits that you add. You know, second thing is if, if you have kids in the house, there are multiple ways that, you know, what about their friends? What about, you know, people who are not trained? What if they, you know, bring other people? All those people you're responsible for, regardless of there's a law or not, being a responsible gun ownership, it's about vigilance, and you need to be aware of what your, where your firearm is and how it's protected. And this is one of the ways that you can keep it safe and ready to use at all times. Yeah, and bad things have happened. I don't want to get into it, but I do personally know <clears throat> people that bad things have happened. I don't want to bring that up in this case just because, you know, um, those people are my friends and everything, and I don't want to use something that happened to them that they have to live with, you know, to uh, to make to make a point here. But bad things have happened, and and then once you know these are irretrievable things when they happen. So if you want to think about the money and stuff like that, I would definitely look at options. There's lots of options out there, not just this. But what we're trying to do is bring this option to you, and then have the 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 people behind it. In this case, Omer that is the designer inventor he brought this thing to you and it was all put together here in america even though like you said the parts are you know obviously like electronics are coming from overseas so i do have an idea i would like to see you put this application on a holster have you thought about that i have considered that but and, and maybe in the future definitely because i felt that even the half a second was too slow but now that we've done testing, now that we've done testing, we found that draw time from a holster is the same because holsters are always, you know, they're tight. So the, the, there's force required, and yeah, I've done so many people. I've said I've asked them to try it. I download versus that, the draw time is the same. So yes, it's in the works. Where we're gonna not in the works anytime soon, but once we get some revenue going, yeah, that's the future development. Right, absolutely. And the Archangel who's um, who's watching and commenting right now says, we also like to see a rifle version. Absolutely. Yeah, I think it has applications there. Okay, Omer, I want to thank you for coming. Omer Kiani, right? Yes. Of Identilock, the inventor of Identilock. Thanks for coming, joining us, taking all this time, putting up with our foolishness. <laughs> thank you so much, for guys. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure. 
Absolutely, you're welcome. Okay, I want to. Um, so I want to remind you guys, if you are interested in this, there is a link in the description that you guys can click through to that. And if you use the uh, code Hank Strange, then you'll be able to get free shipping if you want to buy it. That decision is up up to you, as I said before. Um, obviously, thank you to Omer for coming by for my dental lock. Also for Walter for dropping in. For anyone who's in that Kentucky area, um, I think it's a good idea. Go check out. The, uh, the the Knob Creek machine gun shoot, you know, once in a lifetime opportunity. Well, they do it twice a year, so it's not really once in a lifetime. But who knows nowadays, man? Lots of things getting banned and all that kind of stuff. Things getting more difficult. You really might not be able to do this for much longer. I think I'm going to make plans to go check it out. So go visit Walter. Stop by his table. Take some pictures and stuff like that and let us know. I want to thank everyone that's here in the chat, watching the video, sharing, and all that kind of good stuff. We really appreciate that. I want to thank everyone that sponsors the channel. That would be Safety Harbor Firearms, Rand CLP, Andrews Custom, and of course, Big Daddy Guns right there that gives us the studio, the access to the studio. And I cannot forget all the folks who support us on Patreon. We really need you guys, especially right now with everything going on in the YouTube world. We appreciate your support. Uh, it's Patreon slash Hank Strange. And uh, that's pretty much it. At the end here, Omer, I just throw up the peace sign. There you go, Omer, throwing up the peace sign. I'm throwing up the peace sign. Where? I